Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving for a polynomial. So p of x is a polynomial and we are given an equation p of x divided by p of x minus 1 equals x over x minus 4. And we're going to be solving for p of x. Now let's go ahead and first cross multiply and we're going to turn this into x minus 4 multiplied by p of x and that equals x times p of x minus 1. Awesome. Now in this equation we're allowed to replace x with certain values. So here's one thing that uh, might be interesting. You can replace x with 4, right? Obviously. But in the original equation you can't. So what's the difference? Obviously when you write it as a rational function uh, it's a little different story. Anyway, so in this equation now, we're allowed to replace x with pretty much anything, and this is going to be true for all x values, okay? Let's start with x equals 0. When I do replace x with 0, I get negative 4 times p of 0 equals 0 times p of negative 1. Now, 0 times anything is 0, right? No doubt about it. So from here we get p of 0 equals 0. Good. Let's go ahead and save that. And now replace x with something else. What do you think is going to be our next value? x equals 1. Why? Because x equals 1 is going to work on the right hand side. It's going to give us p of 0, which we already know. And it's going to give us uh, uh, something else uh, on the left hand side. So. Replace x with 1, you get 1 minus 4, like this, which is negative 3, p of 1, equals x, which is 1, times p of 0. Now, we do know from the previous equation that p of 0 is equal to 0, so this is 0, and 1 times 0 is also 0, which means negative 3 times p of 1 is 0, but negative 3 is not 0, so p of 1 has to be 0. Awesome. We got another good result and let's continue, hoping to get a pattern, right? If x is equal to 2, on both sides again, we're going to get negative 2 times p of 2 equals 2 times p of 1. So we know p of 1 is equal to 0, so this will be 0 again, and now this means p of 2 is equal to 0, right? Great. Looks like we could continue this forever, right? x equals 3. Now, when you replace x with 3, and then again, using our original equation, the second original one, negative 1 times p of 3 is going to equal x, which is 3 in this case, times p of 2. And again, same idea applies here. p of 3 will be 0. And then let's see if we can use this. So we oh, so far we got everything equals zero, right? Cool. And we're hoping that this pattern will continue, right? What happens if I replace x with four? Again, we have an identity, so we could keep using it, but guess what? Something breaks down. If you replace x with four on the left-hand side, you're gonna get zero times p of four, which is already zero. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna get four times p of three. Well, do we know p of three? Yes, it's zero, but this is already zero. So this doesn't mean, this doesn't necessarily mean that p of 4 is zero. So this is kind of inconclusive. We have to stop. Obviously, we had to stop somewhere, right? But we got something real good. So let's go ahead and see if we can use these. So what does this mean? p of 0 is 0, p of 1, p of 2, and p of 3 are all zero. Well, p of x is a polynomial, and it probably has roots, right? And these are the roots. Are these the only roots? We do not know at this point. But we do know that these are some of the roots. And we can basically write p of x since 0, 1, 2, and 3 are roots. Using the factor theorem, we can basically write this as x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Obviously, if you replace x with 0, 1, 2, or 3, this is going to be 0, but there could be other roots. How do we account for that? Well, we could probably put a constant in the front, but 
you know, we don't have to have a constant. So instead of that, we're just going to put q of x as a polynomial. Now, q of x could be a constant, but we don't know yet, right? So the next thing we're going to do is to find q of x if we can, right? Obviously, you probably want to know. To find or to get an idea at least about q of x, we could go ahead and substitute this into our original equation. Well, the second one, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? So this one, x minus 4 times p of x equals x times p of x minus 1. By the way, what, what, what would happen if you use this in the very original equation? Would you get the same thing? That's a good question. Anyways, let's go ahead and plug it in. What is x minus 4? x minus 4 is just x minus 4. What is p of x? x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times q of x. That's this one. What about the right hand side? It's x times p of x minus 1. If this is p of x, what is p of x minus 1? You should replace x with x minus 1 and you'll get p of x minus 1. It's that simple, right? Because polynomials are functions, but special functions. So p of x minus 1 is going to be x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus 1, which is x minus 2, and then x minus 3, and then x minus 4, and finally, q of x minus 1, right? There you go. So we replace everything, all the x's with x minus 1, but guess what? We got q of x and q of x minus 1. How do we find it from here? Well, here's something that's amazing. Pretty much everything will cancel out. x minus 4, x minus 4 x, x, x minus 1 and x minus 2 together and x minus 3 and all of that is cancelled out leaving us with q of x equals q of x minus 1. Well, we said that q of x is a polynomial so it is linear, quadratic. What kind of polynomial is it? Well, think about it. If you replace x with x minus 1, nothing changes. So if you replace x with x minus 1 again, you're going to get something like, okay, q of x equals q of x minus 2. And then you could continue doing this and you can replace x with pretty much anything you want. It's always going to be the same value. How is that possible if q of x contains x? Well, this just means that q of x does not contain x. In other words, q of x is a constant. Yay! Because that's only possible, obviously. Now, if q of x wasn't a polynomial and it was just a function that is not a polynomial, would this also be true? That's another good question, right? But here's what happens. Since q of x is constant, I can set it equal to c and then going back to my equation for p of x, I can now write p of x as a constant times x times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 and that's pretty much it. c is a real number, a real constant and basically that's p of x. Now you can go ahead and plug it into the original one and you'll see that it satisfies. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.